<laughs> hey guys, Dante here and welcome back to my channel, The Burger Thought, and welcome back to another stream of For Inktober. We dropped the volume down a pinch from behind me. Today's theme is coral, as in coral, uh, coral reef, or whatever other pun or whatever association you have with that material. Corals! So, let's get right, let's get right into it. I already have an idea of what I want to do. It all comes down to lighting and shadows, and let's see how far I can get before I screw it up. So the first thing we're going to do is start with everyone's favorite thing, mechanical drawing. So right now I'm kind of just fudging uh, the look of this mechanical device. It is kind of like a deep sea vessel, like those really, really deep sea submarines that only fits like two people in it. Pit. We're gonna put my favorite thing, big old rivets, on the sides here.
once I have a general like shape of what I'm looking for maybe it's remote control maybe it's manpower I don't know if it was manpower I feel there'll be a lot more stuff all around it and on it and everything uh, but for now we're gonna stick with this you know what let's put like a put like a mechanical fin back here something there we go Something that indicates it can move around at least. gonna have a nice big floodlight right here in the front. Can be some little mechanical hands. Yo yo yo, orc punch. Try to call you. I tried to call you back earlier, but I think I guess you were busy. That's good to hear. Remember, you gotta tell them the first one's always free. So we're gonna start with some um, I went online and looked up like different types of coral. So we're gonna start with this, the kind of like tube shaped ones. So there's like the tube ones, there's the more um, fan like ones that are flat, sometimes they have mesh in between them. Then you got ones that are literally just shaped like basketballs with these really like brain like patterns up and down them
Take the 20 bucks, man. You know, at, at a certain point, you just accept the fact that they're, they want to pay you for it. You go, okay, fine. Put it towards buying yourself, buying yourself a new computer. That's a good trade-off as well. Why not? Now, I'm a little tempted. Um, I kind of want to do like a sea... Uh, like, like a deep sea creature or some kind of monster in the background like looming behind but i think just like if i get the lighting and all this just right or the shadows i might just be happy with that I know, right? Oh, man. At my job, one of the guys, he's like, he's kind of obsessed with coffee. Like, he makes coffee every day and he tries to get everyone to drink it. We thank him for it, especially when winter comes along. You know we're going to be jumping on that. We don't want coffee every single day at lunch. Uh, but he ended up spinning a little bit a little bit of it on the floor. And someone was like, don't worry, it wasn't Bustello. So it's not like it was a great loss. <laughs>
I'm gonna make sure I get you no know, this is the lighting so I'm trying to get every all the shadows back here as best as I could I don't want to screw up the shadows and you know because it's inking you also don't want to screw up the line work everything this way then I go to the opposite this way because the lights coming towards them so first let's get the little inside of, the, of these tubes The idea is that we are way, way beneath the ocean waves. So I want to like really have some heavy, like heavy black shadows here. So the music has now changed from what is supposedly spooky music to like full on adventurous music, I don't mind. Now it's more like tree like quarrel just has tons of little little like little ridges and dots so rather than then do the streaking I usually do the actual cross hatching I am just going to dot it all around all on one side showing that the shadow is catching in the little textures on one side like sandpaper Hopefully that'll work, I don't know.
I want to jump right into some of the heavy lines, heavy stuff. That way I can get a better idea of the nuance, the, the smaller details, what needs to really be punched up and what needs to be left in. You know, usually I like slowly working my way up until I reach the needed uh, darker shadows, but I want to, like I said, I, I have to kind of gauge how far I am in this. I need to just bite the bullet and go ahead and put the black shadows in. Kind of similar to what I did for the sand dunes in, um, in the dune slash slippery picture, where it's just heavy shadows are just sun on one side, shadow on the other, black, you know, almost solid black and white, or in this case, black and yellow, black and tan, whatever you want to call this color paper is. Now with all the black ink over here, it's going to start curling on me like the last picture did. But it's going to be a lot of black ink all over this, so as I said, bite the bullet, get in there. any of you guys but uh big old creatures in the ocean scare me i'm sure i've said it somewhere in a previous video somewhere um nature scary uh but big animals in water that now that's scary Now that I have this, I could probably go back in with a obviously much smaller pen and um, really work on the coral detail to have the lighting show that more. Let me uh, let me get the background around our little sea vessel as well because this is going to be in an almost all black background.
I say almost because I do want little specks of light just placed randomly around like that. Alright, so we have our ship shaded in pretty well. Like I said, just doing a black outline around it, that way when I go with the brush, I don't have to go too close to it and, you know, screw up the line detail. So now it really is just a matter of me filling all this up with a good ink brush. Because of the light here, I probably won't even bother doing the other claw. I don't know. Maybe I'll do like a little, little dotted line indicating that it's there among the light. Is not really needed? It's not needed, so not a big issue. A trusty tiny ruler. I'm liking this. It's simple. It's not meant to be spooky or crazy. This still kind of fits the uh, scientist theme that I've been going with. You know, not everything is uh, creatures in a lab and radioactive rats. Oh, heaven wish it was. We all know I wish it was. Uh, but sometimes it is just a matter of collecting samples that don't come from, like, people who haven't quite volunteered, you know? Let's see, this is the 20th, and I believe I've uploaded up to day nine on YouTube. So I still got like half a freaking inventory to go. Luckily, like the editing, the editing equipment I have is up to snuff to, to get the edit, the quick editing done. But it's still a matter of it rendering, of course, and everything. That, that of course, is going to take time no matter what you have. I'm liking this. Shadows are coming out good. Nothing yet has imploded on me, so this is, this is all good so far. He says mere moments before his pen breaks open and spills all the ink over the drawing.
little bit of a line overlap right there. Not the end of the world, you can still see everything that's going on. If you think about it, this picture is actually extremely simple in terms of like, you know, what's in it. No need for complicated angles or anything. It was really just a matter of kind of thinking ahead as to how I want the shadows to lay out. Once again, I'll add more shadows in here to really uh, push the um, contrast between the light and darks. Now you got me thinking of coffee. Maybe I should have put a pot, a pot of coffee on nice and low as I did this drawing. Curse you, walk punch. Always getting inside my head. Yeah, forget that circle. Yeah, like I said, I could have done like a spooky pair of teeth or something in the in the shadows over here. But you know what? I I'm too happy with the basic shading on this and a simple little um, composition. I think doing that would have distracted from everything else. I know both Orc Punch and uh, Marvel are fans of H.P. Lovecraft. Now, I have I know of the stories. I've seen the variations of it. I've seen people do discussions on them. I've never actually read them, though. Um, now, there are many things about H.P. Lovecraft people today do not agree with in terms of his views of the world. But he was right about one thing. The fear of the unknown, especially the ocean which is a massive part of our world that we still don't know about. Like, it is a real thing, that kind of, you know, that fear of like, things that are greater than you, bigger than you, stronger than you. Uh, go into any freaking museum and just look at either the present day aquatic life or the prehistoric aquatic life, and you understand, you kind of get, you know, that fear that he had, that, that he, well, the fear that he had that he focused into the uh, the aquatic portions of his story, the fish people, the uh, sleeping giants at the bottom of the ocean. You kind of get how easy it is to be terrified of that.
I'm not sure if I want to try and hint to the second claw. Damn right, that spooky business. We can. There's some. I mean, there's stuff. What gets me up the. Okay, let me put it this way. You have cryptozoology, right? Which is the uh, quote unquote scientific study of creatures that are not fully explained by modern day science, I guess is one way to put it. Now, you have Bigfoot. You have, like, the New Jersey Devil. So you have all these creatures that are on land that are usually, if you do enough research, you can kind of backtrack as to how these legends got started. Like, the New Jersey Devil, you can actually, like, backtrack news articles to a point where it was literally just, like, some politician was talking smack about a family and making fun of them. and Or, or it was in a news article, and it just eventually became the New Jersey Devil. Like, the story was them making fun of these people. Now, the thing about the ocean is, when you have stories about the ocean that land in cryptozoology, sometimes those things end up being true. For many, many, many years, people are like, Krakens aren't real, there's no such thing as a real giant squid, until about roughly 100 years ago, like several of them wound up, wound up on, on shorelines. There's a giant squid, I forget which museum, it's somewhere out there, there's some museum out there, where they have a giant squid like frozen in a block of ice. And that's like cryptozoology that's proven real. Like, guess what? This stuff is out there. You know, you, you try to prove to someone that, that Bigfoot's real and they'll laugh at you. You prove to someone, you tell someone, however, there is a giant squid monster in the ocean that is known to eat ships. They'll, they might just believe you and for good reason. Here we are. Really simple, to the point. A little out of focus, apparently. Let me see if I can zoom in a pinch. The issue with this app is that it zooms in like doesn't just go a little bit, it goes from zero to ninety, like it just jumps. Let's see if that works. That's a little better. Yeah, there we go. There is coral. So that's once again October twenty twenty on the twentieth. I don't want to sign any way in here. It'll just ruin it. So I'll just sign the bottom instead. That's the burgle thought. <laughs> Cancel the cracking. Oh, good lord. I looked up what the term Leviathan means, because Leviathan is used a lot in science fiction and with fiction in general. Um, people just are just... The hell? Oh, okay, wait, sorry. The, the background music just switched to something stupid. So, uh, Leviathan is used a lot, usually as a giant, like, catch-all for giant sea monster. Leviathan, apparently, by definition, means giant sea serpent. It's like this dragon-esque kind of sea serpent, which is what you usually see on the side of maps. You know, these old-timey maps, they'll draw like a little sea serpent that's kind of going in and out the water. That's a leviathan. However, um, a paleontologist, the paleontologist who discovered the ancestor to what is now the commonly known as white whale. So basically, it is just a giant white whale or sperm whale with teeth. That are massive. Like it, it is it is a current day sperm whale with giant buck teeth that are like super sharp. They're like the size of my freaking forearm, but they're pointed. And that's all it really is. Like the only thing they've done since prehistoric times is get rid of the buck teeth. Um and he named it 
the Something Leviathan. It's named after the writer of Moby Dick, whose name escapes me right now. Let's say his name is John, so it's called the John Leviathan. So there actually is a prehistoric creature called Leviathan. Uh, but, in, but even then, it's still just a catch-all name because, by definition, it's meant to be a giant serpent. But the guy was like, yeah, Leviathan sounds cool. I'll just name this Discovery Leviathan. He could have named it after himself, but he didn't. He named it after a famous author of a famous book and of a famous sea monster, which I think is kind of cool. But anyway, so there we go, guys. Um, as always, still images you're going to find of this over on the social media links to the right. I will, of course, slowly upload these up to YouTube as well for future viewing. And as always, I am Dante. Like, favorite, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Later.